Hello and happy Thursday. Welcome to another Lunch and Learn with Purse Strings. Um, today we are going to be talking about uh, going into the holiday season without um, the debt, which is awesome. Very excited about this conversation. Um, it's perfect timing as we start getting ready for the holiday season. Um, for those who are new here, my name is Maggie. I am a partner at Purse Strings and we are all about providing uh, financial education for women. Just some tips, tricks, uh, get, get the wheels turning. Um, but then when you need a professional to, you know, help you with your budget, get ready for retirement, you know, might be getting married or divorced, any of these different things. We have um, financial professionals who love to serve with the female market are all um, approved by purse strings. And we call those our purse strings approved professionals. Um, Cheryl here is one of them. And so, um, Cheryl, before we dive in, could you give a little intro of who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. It's nice to be here. Um, so my name is Cheryl Kosofsky. I have a company called Self Worth, and I'm a financial coach or a money coach. Um, and what that means is I assist my clients uh, with some skills. I teach them how to budget, how to uh, save for the future, how to get out of debt, how to increase their credit score, things of that nature, along with helping them understand uh, their thinking around money. What uh, is kind of driving them in the actions they take with money. So that includes spending and, um, but also, you know, just sort of how they feel about themselves in regards to money. So it's a two pronged kind of process. Awesome. Well, we're excited um, about this conversation today and to have you on um, because this is kind of, you know, the foundations that we need, especially around holiday time. So, oh, yeah. Um, to start, you know, one of the things is that the holidays can get really stressful. Um, why, why are the holidays so stressful? I mean, why does this even happen? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for most of us, um, we've been influenced by family history, by, um, what we've seen on television. You know, we've all many, at least about my generation, we've all watched white Christmas we have these visions of these idyllic situations in our mind of what the holidays are supposed to look like, how we're supposed to feel. And often what winds up happening is that we overcommit ourselves to doing things and um, are running around like a nut. And, um, you know, overcommitting ourselves to do things that we probably, in many cases, don't even really want to be doing. Right. And sometimes for some of us overspend and so between all those things and the emotions that come up from all those things uh it can be a real challenge and and for women particularly you know we are taught that we're supposed to be uh the caretakers mm -hmm. and so many of us have this idea that we're responsible for the happiness of everybody who we come in contact with over the holidays, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of overpromise on what we can deliver and um, take on everybody else's expectations. Yeah, definitely. We always think it's this going to be this magical moment, these magical times, um, and and we have to bring the magic. Um, yeah. We are the magic holders. Um, and so, yeah, it definitely, yeah, I can see how that makes it stressful. And so, and, and you kind of alluded to this, but you know, how come women spend or typically overspend for the holidays? Yeah. So that is a huge issue. Um, yeah. so, so many of us women are, you know, kind of have fairly low self-esteem actually. Um, we are brought up to think that we are less than others. And um, often that means that uh, it gets conflated, you know, how much money we spend on people or what kind of gift we give them gets mixed up with um, what can I do to get folks to love me? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we have this idea, if I make this perfect, if I buy the perfect gift for my spouse, if I buy the perfect gift, you know, for my kids in particular, um, then, you know, they're going to have a great time and then they're going to love me more. Mm. Only they love you anyway. And, <laughs> you know, um, and so part of 
part of this is actually getting that in order to be loved and adored and for people to want to spend time with you, you only need to be yourself. But for many, many of us, women in particular, that is really hard to convince ourselves that that's the truth. Yeah. And um, so we overcompensate. And, you know, you know, I did this for years of my life and wound up in debt like you wouldn't believe, you know, just wanting to buy that perfect gift, you know, that I thought somebody would just really, really love. And it turns out actually that our kids in particular, but even others, we're actually interested in the experience of each other mm-hmm. more than we're interested in the gift we get. And um, so if we think about that, that really those other people in our lives are just really wanting our love and attention too. Yeah. Um, that, you know, and that that gift in particular is not as important as that child thinks it is that day. You know, especially if we have small kids, those kids will like, you know, hang on your uh, coattails, you know, over and over and over. No, mommy, I want that. No, mommy, I want that. You know, but they want it for two days, you know, and then the next shiny thing comes up and they look at that and they want that instead. So um, it winds up being a pretty dangerous cycle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we wind up in debt and um, feeling remorse. And uh, that actually reduces our self-esteem even more because now we feel shame that we went out and spent all this money that we didn't have and the cycle continues. So. Yeah. And by then, once you kind of have all the debt, the holidays over, the sparkle's kind of gone, you know? And so mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like you really enjoyed that time and it was almost worth it. Um, yeah. Or- yeah. Especially if you're spending your time running or out buying these gifts and, you know, um, volunteering your time to do stuff you don't want to do you wind up not only with yourself but your your loved ones to lose out on what they really wanted that holiday to be about which is connection yeah you know yeah exactly what we all want is connection and um you know so if we shift things and think about it in terms of what kind of an experience can i create for my family and friends rather than what kind of gift I can give them. So those kinds of things can include, you know, maybe we're going to bake cookies together, yeah. you know, or we're going to make cards for loved ones together or uh, have a, some kind of a gift hunt, you know, so that it's the experience of looking around and, being on a team with, you know, family members or whatever and doing something fun together. Right. Um, or, you know, if it happens to be snowing, building a snowman together, you know, those kinds of things are what, you know, and if you think as an adult too, what do you remember most about when you were a kid? It's those times when your parents or friends or whatever did things with you. Yeah. You know, um, we went to this thing. I helped my m- grandmother bake bread. I, you know, whatever it is, those things are lasting memories that we care deeply about and mean the world to us. Do we remember if we got a Barbie? Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, you, you're very right. I mean, we remember those memories. And I'm a big person who's a, a proponent of play. Um, even as a grown adult, you know, you have to play. And I feel like that's one way to really release some of that stress and let it go mm-hmm. and just have play and have fun. Um, so what are some of like other ways that we can kind of get rid of this stress um, over the holidays? So planning. So um, one thing to do is to kind of look back in your history and discover what is actually important to you. Mm-hmm. So one way of doing this is to look at your past and look to see what are the activities that I did that were really meaningful to me when I was younger. Um, they might be traditional things. Maybe it's going to midnight mass. Maybe it's... Um, you know, the joy of just lighting candles for Hanukkah with everybody. Um, right. Or, you know, I know a number of people when I was younger used to have uh, like very large events for trimming the tree together. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like everybody would bring, you know, one little uh, ornament for the tree and together create this uh, event. So if you think about what was that, do I want this to be a spiritual event? Is that the piece? Is it um, some religious aspect that's important? Is it the gift giving? Is it the food that's involved, you know, that they're special? You know, my family, I tried one year to make a Thanksgiving different di- dinner that was different than the way my mother did it. And people were horrified. They were so pissed off at me. I can't even tell you. It's like, no, we need to have the fried. My mother used to make fried rice. We need to have the fried rice. Why did you make squash? You know, that's not Thanksgiving. Um, so, you know, is it that, that there's certain things that you get to eat at those times that are particularly special about that? Um, and then kind of pre-plan, okay, so if those are the things that are meaningful to me, how do I make sure that we have some of those kinds of experiences together during this holiday? Right. And I do to put this together. You know, you said you like games. Maybe it's we have game night mm-hmm. where we get out the board games and we just all sit together and play one board game after another for three hours or whatever. Um, that for some people can be just, you know, incredibly joyful. I like, you know, in my family, we do jigsaw puzzles together yeah. uh, after Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so whatever those kind of memories portend, you know, we want to make sure we include those. Equally, we want to make sure that we're looking to see what are the things I hate about the holidays, you know, and, you know, maybe it's, I hate that I always wind up sitting next to this particular person who talks to me about politics that I don't agree with or whatever. Yeah. It pisses me off. So don't sit next to that person this time or don't invite them if that's a possibility. Right. Um, protect yourself. Also knowing you come first. So that's a thing we women, you know, just kind of don't ever think. So, you know, you want to design it so you have an enjoyable, joyous time. Yeah. Everybody else can figure it out for themselves. You don't have to pre-guess what they want. And actually, if you really want to be of service, ask them what they want so that you can make sure you can deliver. Mm-hmm. You know, like what are the things they find joyous about the holidays? What activities do they want to participate in? That's a great thing to do with your family instead of trying to guess right. what brings them joy. Uh, so that's a piece. And uh, that includes planning for your spending. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a huge piece of it that you need to make sure um, that you include. Um, and that looks like pre-deciding how much is comfortable for you to spend on the holidays in advance. So usually all of us go shopping. We think of, oh my, you know, I want to buy a beautiful piece of jewelry for this person, or I want to buy whatever. And we don't put a dollar amount on it. We just say, that's what I'm looking for. And then we go out and we see this thing and it's way more than we ever would have, you know, planned on spending. And we just go, but I said I was going to buy this piece of jewelry. Okay, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. But you actually kind of want to pre-sit down because, you know, knowing in advance that if you don't, you're going to be regretful. Mm -hmm. So what can I give comfortably? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you make a list, you kind of go through and say, okay, for my daughter, I'm spending this much money. For my son, I'm spending this much money. For my spouse, I'm spending this much. Um, Adding it all, excuse me, adding it all up and making sure that once you've added it all up, it's a comfortable amount to spend. Mm -hmm. If you decide that, you know, like for some people, they kind of buy at the holidays and they're expecting to get a tax return uh, in the spring and they're thinking, Oh, well, that'll cover it. Mm -hmm. That's the case. You can allow yourself to use your credit card, but only up to a certain dollar amount. So you got to be thinking about it in terms of that. You're giving yourself a loan Mm -hmm. from that credit card. And as with all loans, there's that interest. Oh yeah. So, you know, but you want to make sure then within this period of time, I'm going to be able to pay this off comfortably. 
um, so that you're planning that all out in advance. Mm-hmm. We also forget about the little stuff for the holidays, right? We think. I was okay, going to say that's where gift. That's where I get tripped and up. Gift wrap, you know, and I don't know about you. I could go nuts on the gift wrap and ribbons and stuff. That's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> like laying it out, you know. I used to be a visual artist. I lay it out. I like to see the boxes next to each other with beautiful different gift wrap, so that you know together they look great. And you know, um, so we have to plan that in too. How much mm-hmm. I'm going to let myself um, spend on gift wrap? How much on? ornaments how much on um the meal you know yeah. <clears throat> that i'm preparing for this event um we forget about that you know many of us in the office wind up giving co-workers gifts either a real gift or some offices now are being more um conscientious and sort of having you pick one person that you're giving that gift to right you got to include all of that in the overall amount that you're willing to spend for the holidays. Mm-hmm. So you're not winding up, you know, putting yourself in danger, which is what happens when you're going into debt. You're actually putting your financial future in danger. And so you want to make sure that you're doing this consciously. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And so, you know, I think sometimes I think, um, you know, I, I always forget the people like the mailman or you want to give, you know, the cleaning lady, you know, a holiday bonus or some other holiday, you know, bonuses. And it's hard when you feel like, you know, I would love to pay you an extra, you know, hundred bucks, but like, I really don't have that, but I, but I feel that you are worth it. Um, and, and that is that hard dynamic, but sometimes, you know, you can find other ways to kind of get around that through, you know, homemade goods or, um, things like that. But I, I don't know. That's a spot that I always seem to get tripped yeah. up in. And I was it like, can be yeah. good. It can be a gift card for $5 to Starbucks. Yeah. Um, you know, some small amount that's, as I say, comfortable for you to do that shows your appreciation. And if you're really strapped, just that card saying you appreciate that person means a lot. Yeah. Definitely. You know, because so many people don't even take the time to just acknowledge someone. Yeah. And so, you know, that alone, if that's all you can afford, that's fine. There, you know, but we feel this um, pressure kind of that we need to be giving in a certain way. And that's true with, um, you know, the other thing to, to keep in mind as you're thinking about the holidays, too, is donations. Mm-hmm. You know, we come to the end of the year and anytime you turn on the television, the radio, or whatever, somebody's asking for money for a donation towards the end of the year. And that too, how much can you really afford to do? Yeah. And that's a piece, you know, unfortunately, some of our religious leaders put an immense amount of pressure on people to be donating way more than they can actually really afford to do. And right. um, my own feeling about this is God wants you to take care of you first. You know, um, there is no point in putting, you know, giving so much that you're putting yourself and your family at risk. Yes. Absolutely no reason for that. And um, love and sending love and sending healing thoughts is every bit as appropriate as sending dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, And so I know, you know, you have this holiday spending plan and I'm going to put it in the chat for people to download, but it's a great opportunity for you to sit down and kind of write who you're going to buy for, um, how much you want to spend and kind of, and I know you added in there, you know, all those lines, like you were saying before of the food. Share my screen. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. How do I do that? You can click present at the bottom and then share a screen. Um, I know this year for our family for holidays, we, um, you know, since there are more kids now and everything else, we're going to do like a random draw and just buy for one person um, because, you know, we can't we can't buy for everyone ever anymore. And it's just because, you know, families are getting so big. Are you um, seeing my screen now? I don't. So mm. share screen and then you can either do entire screen oh, or the window. Is it sharing? No. Mm. 
Okay, how about now? <clears throat> I still don't see it. All right, uh, I will try once more, and if not, we'll give it up. If, if you want, I can share it on my end as well. Yeah, share it on your end and pull up a page that is uh, includes one of those boxes you were talking about. Yes. Um, do, do, do. Got to make sure. Share. Let's add this. All right. Um, yeah, go down a couple pages. So this is the um, spending plan that I've showed you. So you can see on here how, how you fill this out is um, where it says gifts for friends, gifts for family. You're going to put in your target amount is how much do you actually want to spend on those things? So um, you're going to say, okay, for all the people in my family, I'm going to spend $500. Then as you buy, and you want to do this, by the way, in pencil <laughs> so that you can make adjustments to it as you go. Um, then you get, and if you don't want to do it in pencil on here, or you want a program to actually, you know, add and subtract for you, you can make a sheet like this on either Google Docs or um, uh, in Excel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I... Uh, didn't want to do it this way so that more people could participate with it. But um, the next row is actually when you go shopping every single time in that category, you're going to add in that dollar amount. And the reason for this is a plan is only as good as uh, it can be if you stick to it. So if you don't check to make sure you're sticking to the plan, you'll absolutely not know where you stand. So you're gonna come in here and say, okay, so today I went out and I saw a sweater from my son. I spent $49 on it. So I put that $49 in here. Remaining is the difference. So if I said 500, we're gonna say 50 rather than 49, say 500, then remaining is 450. So this keeps you on track so that you know how much is left to spend. Um, because if you're not keeping track of that, as I say, you can say, yeah, my goal is 500, but if you know, you're know you waiting to see how you did till all, you know, till after the holidays, chances are you're gonna have spent more than you planned on. Right. Um, another way of making sure absolutely that you stick to the plan, by the way, is to put that $500 in an envelope in cash. Mm, that's a great tip. And when you go shopping, you've got for that category, only that $500. When the money's gone, the money's gone. And so that ensures that you're gonna stick to the plan. Hard to do, I mean, it's one of those things, it's, it's simple in a way, you know, you just put the money in there, but challenging, right? Yeah. Really hard to stick to it. But um, if you're committed to doing that, you will be, you know, debt free always. <laughs> you know? So for each, you'd have an envelope then for each of these categories that you set up. Awesome. Yeah, it's great because you have all these different people. Um, and so, that, you know, it kind of reminds you who you're buying for um, and then you also know, you know, did I have everyone covered? And you kind of have your own checklist there. Yep, I, I bought them, I bought for them. Um, and you kind of have that set and ready to go. Yeah. And what's also then in this is, um, you know, strategies that we talked about before for, you know, creating meaningful moments rather than buying gifts. There are uh, also just some tips about, you know, um, like this, putting money in an envelope kind of thing to make sure that you uh, get through the holidays joyfully and yeah. without debt. Um, and yeah, and so that's gonna be in the chat um, once I once I jump off here, cause it's not, let me do it right now, but it'll be in the chat so everyone can download that as well. Um, yeah, and the other thing I wanna say about that is, so I, as a gift to your uh, people in your community, on the last page of that is a gift for everyone. Um, it's a 30 minute free consultation of financial counseling. And so in that 30 minutes, we can talk about not only planning for the holidays, but mm -hmm. how do you plan your spending in general so that you always have enough money? 
or how do you figure out how to find the money to save for retirement? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, all those different topics are possible conversations. And I'm giving you a free half hour session with me, which normally would be $125. Um, you can use it yourself. You can also give it to a friend or family member. So um, great gift. Yeah, that's a really nice gift. So I appreciate Cheryl, uh, you giving that to our community. Um, so yeah, take advantage of that conversation because um, yeah, you just want to get started. Um, sometimes jumping in is the hardest part. So yeah, just jump in, get started. Um, and my last question for you is, you know, what is, um, sorry, I thought I had one more for you. Um, what is a gift that we can give loved ones that have lifelong benefits? Oh, so that's what I was talking about a minute ago. So that is, you know, giving people the gift of financial peace of mind, which Mm -hmm. is what happens when people complete a series of financial coaching sessions. They know it's not necessarily that your income will increase, although for many clients it does. Right. Um, but that you always know exactly where every penny is and that you are fine, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, I don't know about you, but that was one of the best gifts I ever received is knowing, you know, I was an entrepreneur most of my life. I think I was always okay, but I'd be in my head all the time kind of trying to figure it out and never really sure and anxious and fearful a lot of the time. Um, and so now with knowing how to manage my money well and create spending plans and tracking my expenses and income, I always know I am fine. Yeah. Um, and if something comes up and I'm not fine, I can see it usually before it happens and prepare for it. Um, and so that's a gift you can give to your children, uh, you know, especially if they're getting ready to be graduating from college. Yeah, they need to know how to manage their money. Um, if you have uh, a good wedding gift for people, you know, it's really hard for people to um, learn how to merge their incomes mm-hmm. and get comfortable with each other's spending habits. Um, and so financial counseling can be a great gift to help that couple move forward on a really, really steady foot. Yeah, it's, there's nothing better than some peace of mind and to be able to sleep at night without having that anxiety. I mean, that is priceless in itself. Mm -hmm. Um, So I appreciate you coming on today and providing all this great information, Um, just really getting prepared for the holidays. And, you know, it's enough in advance where we can start kind of looking at things and thinking things over and maybe during Thanksgiving talk with your family about, you know, what are you thinking for the holidays? What would be the best memory for you? Um, in your family, what do you want to do? Um, I don't know. I was thinking just during this call, like, oh, we should just invest in like a new board game that we can all then really enjoy. Um, so it's much cheaper than buying everyone a gift, but you know, the hours are priceless. Yeah, and Twister um, is really fun too. Which one? Twister, if you've got kids, oh. they love that. <laughs> I've not played Twister in a while. That sounds like a ton of fun, especially now that everyone's a bit older. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Cheryl. Um, I will make sure that the the link to that download is with us as well. Um, so please reach out to Cheryl. Her email is on the bottom going through here. It's also going to be on that document. Take advantage of that 30 minutes um, just so you can you know, start your financial journey, making sure you're on the right foot. Um, and we will be back here um, again next week with some more uh, information about you know being abundant and thankful this holiday season. Um, So thank you again, Cheryl, and we'll talk to everyone soon. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.